Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced and you're listening to Mastering Financial Exams, a podcast from Greco Financial Training. So if you need insurance licensing, if you need securities licensing, Series 7, Series 24, SIE, if you need to get your designation such as becoming a financial risk manager or a chartered alternative investment analysis, come down to Greco.com. We got stuff for you. But in this episode of Mastering Financial Exams, what we want to talk about is uh, ETNs, exchange traded notes versus ETFs and just kind of talk a little bit about the difference between the two. So later on, I'll kind of go into the history of ETFs in a future episode, but bottom line is the simplest way to think of an ETF, it's a mutual fund that trades like a stock. It typically follows an index. So generally when you're buying an ETF, you're buying something that's going to track some sort of index, whether it's a sector index, a broad base index like the Dow Jones or S&P 500 but you're buying to get that performance. So if the S&P is up, your Spider, which is an S&P ETF, will be up. But the problem with an ETF is that you are investing in a fund. So there's not a guarantee that the portfolio manager will get you exactly the return of the index. When that portfolio manager misses that performance, that's called a tracking error. So you have that risk when you buy an ETF. Also, you have more principal risk because if the ETF's price goes down, there's no guarantee it'll ever go back up, kind of like a stock. So whenever you think of an ETF, an exchange-traded fund, think of it more like a stock. While an ETN, exchange-traded note, which also links itself to an index. So when you buy an ETN, you're trying to get the performance of an index. It works a little bit differently. Instead of putting your money in a portfolio, what you're doing is you're lending money to an investment bank. And at a certain point in the future, when that bond matures, they will pay you back your par value plus the performance of the benchmark index. So in this case, you don't have a tracking error. If the S&P is up 10%, you get 10%. If the S&P is up 20%, you get 20% because you're not investing in a portfolio. But the catch is if the issuer, the investment bank who sold you the ETN, goes out of business, then you don't get any money. You have credit risk. So you're swapping out one risk for another. So so if you prefer the risk profile of a bond, then you probably would prefer an exchange-traded note. But if you prefer the risk profile of a stock, then you might prefer an ETF. But they both provide you a way to sort of get exposure to a particular index. So keep that in mind when you see questions about ETFs versus ETNs and comparing the two. My name is Alex Merced. You're listening to Mastering Financial Exams, where we're here. We're trying to go over financial concepts for the purposes of preparing for exams like Series 7 and the SIE. This is not financial advice. I will see you guys soon.